So, let's look at uh, case marking. Uh, once again, particularly for exceptional case marking, what we are going to discuss today is called exceptional case marking. But before we understand what is exceptional about the new type of case marking that we are going to talk about, uh, it is very important to be clear about the actual, the real case markings that we have known so far. So, briefly, once again, case is a property of sentence, that is, we talk about case when we are talking about sentences. The case is only realized on NPs and uh, there are two types of them. Sometimes they are visible on the word with modifications in the word. So, we call them morphological case, that is they appear in a, in a morphological form and sometimes there is no change on the lexical or pronominal NP, then we call them abstract cases. Okay? We have seen that heads are largely case assigners that is whether we are talking about V, P or I, all of them are case markers. Rest of what we have seen, which is how do these heads assign cases to their complements and to the NPs that are in their C commanding domain. The, that phenomena is called structural case marking, that is we capture the notion of case transfer from head to the NP in terms of a structural configuration with the help of X bar scheme. Therefore, it is called a st structural case marking. Okay? And then we have seen two terms. We, we first started looking at uh, uh, structural relation in terms of dominance and precedence and we clarified what is the relationship of dominance and what do we mean when we say a particular element precedes the other one and how do we capture this dominance and precedence in the X bar scheme. Soon, soon after while looking at cases, we saw two more which is it is not enough to say that heads assign cases, we want it more restrictive in the sense that we went ahead and said heads assign cases because heads govern their complements. Okay? Heads govern the NPs that they assign cases to and they govern the NPs in a particular way which is the notion of C command. So, V and P assigns accusative cases to their complements because V and P go govern their complements and they see command their complements. However, when we started looking at nominative case marking, there was a problem and the problem is existing definition, existing notion of C command was not giving us enough of space for the head i to be able to assign c command, to be able to assign nominative case under the no existing notion of c command to the specifier position of i p which where we usually find subjects. Okay? Then as a part of modification in the existing definition and, and for that matter existing existing apparatus in theory, we made a modification, we saw a modification and that modification comes up in terms of M command, which is little bit 
in, which is in its nature more accommodative and it expands in, in such a way that we want the spec of IP that is the subject position under the M command domain of the head I. That is what we wanted to do. At the same time, we wanted to restrict it under the local domain of IP. Therefore, we added one more restriction so that, so that we can say I M command spec IP, but I does not M command anything beyond its own scope that is anything within VP or further down. This is what we saw yesterday. All right. Now, with that, we, we do not have all our problems taken care of. Even with the idea of case marking, we see some problems. Okay. When we took care of accusative cases, we were very happy and we saw structurally it is working very nice, heads, government, C command, very nice. All right. Then we saw a problem with nominative cases and uh, we, we needed to expand uh, existing apparatus and then we were still able to accommodate all of, all of that. See, what we are doing is we are trying to accommodate things in the theory. As a matter of fact, as a matter, as, as a consequence of that, we are weakening the theory. The more the patches, weaker the theory. But that patch also did not solve all the problems. We still run in problems. So, I am going to show you problems and then we are going to talk about how those problems are taken care of. And such problems and the way we take care of that is called an exceptional way of taking care of case assignment. Therefore, they are called exceptional case marking. All right. So, we will we will look at that. One more point uh, before we, we discuss exceptional case marking. We saw nominative case assignment and difficulty with that. Please keep in mind that the bringing in notion of M command to take care of nominative case marking was accepted within the existing parameters at that time. But people were not completely comfortable with this as you can, as, as I can tell you, uh, we, we do not have enough time to go into every single step to see what we mean or to understand what we mean when we say researchers were not comfortable with this, this uh, patch. They wanted more comprehensive account of it. Actu and the reason why I am mentioning this thing is because I want you to connect what we have discussed little earlier with this as well that the patch in the theory and the problems of nominative case assignment was also one of the motivations for expanding IP, sorry, the expanding I in terms of AGRP, tense phrase and aspect phrase and getting rid of IP completely, which in a way created problem. Then if, if we get rid of IP, then where does subject go to? And then under that uh, dismissal of IP, how do we account, how do we take care of cases? Okay. That was a new, new paradigm in the theory, which we are not discussing right now. After looking at exceptional case marking, uh, we will again briefly go around that problem to go to a different module, which we have to look at, okay? which, we, which I start uh, later. But am I, am I making sense to you when I say that the problems of nominative case assignment was one of the motivating factor for expansion of I in terms of AGRP, TP and all other, which did not solve the problem, rather raised more problems and then people kept working 
on those things. But as long as you see the expansion, the motivation for, for separating several bundle, several features under one bundle of I, we are, we are okay with that. Is that okay? All right. Now, let's come back, look at, look at this particular aspect and then we will talk about such things little later. So we are done, we are done with this thing. Any reason for highlighting? The the play if f not highlighted. Yeah. Play is highlighted or place. No, I think s is not highlighted. S is not highlighted. Yes, yes. There is a cl clear reason for that. The clear reason for that is s is is a morphological unit. Okay, which is representing something else on the verb play. And it is representing something which is part of infill. So in this context? No, not in this context. In this context, I, the, the reason why we, I left S is because I wanted to tell you that I has nothing to do with case assignment of accusatives. Only play, the word play as a head assigns accusative case. Anything else that comes up on I on surface structure okay, has nothing to do with accusative case assignment. Yes, that was the, the reason why I left that. All right. We have looked at these things and we saw until this yesterday right, that I assigns nominative case to the, to the subject NP. All right, clear? We have discussed all of this and uh, here are the two things, government and C command, which are responsible for assignment of cases, but this existing definition of C command was not enough to take care of nominative case assignment. Therefore, we talked about M command and then when we look at the difference between C command and M command afresh, we need to modify the notion of government and this is how finally the notion of government looks like. And thus, under this notion of government, we can say both I and V govern the NPs that the case assign. Okay? All right. Now, these are the two sentences which I wanted you to look at. Very simple sentences. I think one of, I, I have discussed one of them or I have briefly mentioned it to you, but now is the time to look at them carefully. Simple sentences, everybody is clear about these sentences? It, this, these sentences are similar to the sentences, we can also, we also say, I want to go, right? So when we say, I want to go at, at the same time, I just want to make one additional point. When, when we say, I want to go, what we actually say is, I want I to go. Okay? I want I to go. And the fact that both I are co-indexed with one another, therefore, the second one is dropped. Following the principle of economy, there is no need to retain the second one. All right? That that is just one example. Uh, you, you may ask why are we talking about first, first bringing in I into that sentence that is I want I to go and then we are talking about deleting it. The only reason why I am talking about that is because I want you to see that is one of the examples which clearly shows us op operating principle of economy. Okay? So, there would be there would be nothing wrong if we said i want i to go but we don't want to say because the principle of economy operates very categorically now let's look at these things and there is one more reason why i mentioned i want i to go i'll discuss about that when i come to these sentences so in a in a traditional fashion slowly the way we have looked at every other sentence, let us look at this thing. The, do you see that these sentences have two sentences in them? 
if yes okay if not still okay no all right fine what's the what's the verb in this sentence want clear do you see another verb here go and which is to go right please bring in your mind what we discussed about finiteness and non finiteness what did we say about finiteness finiteness equals to tense which is we say a sentence is a finite sentence when a sentence has tense right and also agreement and things like that a sentence is non finite when we don't have tense in the sentence all right please keep that also in mind so want is the verb in the sentence main verb in this sentence by main verb we mean when we are talking about the sentence we are talking about want and with want the sentence is finite right i want so which tense is here i want you to go i want him to go what sentence what tense is there present tense right very nice want is a transitive verb or intransitive verb transitive verb so it is going to have an object what's the object of this verb verb john to go john to go or something else the complement or the object of the verb want is john to go that is the the question is what do i want i don't want john i want john to go or him to go right now look at that part him to go uh, while uh, while while i am waiting and i'll i'll draw this thing here if you get time uh, please draw the structure for this thing as well so so far you see ip right and vp right okay let me draw let me draw this thing for you uh here is here is our good old ip so here is our i np right here is a uh i which is present tense right present tense which means plus finite that is the presence of the present tense makes the sentence finite sentence all right so then we have a vp and since we have been retaining the specifier position so far so let me retain it once again and see we have a v which is want clear right now the question is what is the complement of this verb want okay john to go or him to go is the whole thing as the complement now if i say john to go right is a sentence what is missing from that sentence is that a, is that a real good looking sentence no that's not a real good looking sentence that is they, there are features of there are ingredients of a sentence in this where it seems like it has a subject john and it has a predicate to go okay but there is there are things missing in it which is there is no tense okay because the moment we had tense we will not be able to use infinitive verbs to go will not be used all right so this is an example of non finite type of a sentence which is not possible independently as an independent sentence which is outside the domain of this main bigger sentence independently this type of sentence is not possible we never say i to go right you to eat we don't say these types of sentences right so your friend is laughing 
about this. But that type of sentences looks perfectly all right here. You see that? So, there must be a reason why that type of sentence is allowed under the larger domain of a bigger sentence and it is not independently ok. Answer is very simple, there is no mystery here. The reason why this is not independently ok is that is an infinite sentence and being infinite also that sentence does not have is, is missing agreement, is missing all sorts of connecting features between subject and predicate. Okay? Therefore, that is not as that is not a good sentence, but nonetheless that is a sentence. Okay? So, here we are going to say it is an IP. It is not a full looking good looking IP, but this is an IP. All right? But, so the again the problem is let us let us draw this thing and then you will see further problem. So, here is your him or John. I, I am putting him for a specific reason that I want you to see that this NP in the subject position of the lower clause okay, is not getting a nominative case, it is getting an accusative case. You see this thing? So, hold on. So, now we have I, here is our I and here is our VP and for the simplicity, I am going to put it as to go, where there is no complement of this verb to go, it is an intransitive verb and we can, we can put them together. Actually, it is in the V head position of V, go or to go, but this, since there is no complement, we are just putting them together. Interesting thing is, this happens to be non-finite sentence, right? Now, we are saying I assigns nominative case to the subject, right? See this thing? We have just discussed this thing. Here, we have another IP where we do not, do not have nominative case. Can we say I want he to go? I want he to go? No. Now, please notice the ungrammaticality of the sentence I want he to go is located in he which means he has nominative case and therefore, it is not allowed. Him has accusative case and still it is allowed. Okay? What I am trying to hit at is if this is if this is can if if this I can assign nominative case to this, what is the problem of this I assigning nominative case to this NP? Does everybody see the problem? See the, see the problem? But so this one is assigning nominative case, this one is not assigning nominative case. That is the conclusion. How do we explain this problem and how do, how do we resolve this problem? This is what is called explanatory capacity of this framework. That we can say I want him to go is a good sentence and I want he to go is not a good sentence. But beyond this giving a judgment or description, we need to explain why so. The earlier methods, earlier models, earlier theoretical approaches did not have the capacity to explain it. This theory, case theory with the help of X bar scheme not only explains the problem clearly, but it also provides solutions, of course with patches, but solution to the <coughs> problems that it comes up. It does not try to brush the problems aside, it does not put the problems under the rug. Okay? It lets you see the problem clearly and therefore, if you can see the problem clearly, you can try to solve them in a clearer fashion. Here is what happens. 
once we are clear that this i does not assign nominative case to this np then we know what is about i that assigns nominative case it's not just the i which assigns nominative case what assigns nominative case actually is the finiteness is tense and other features which is bundled under it is what is responsible for nominative case this i lower i being non finite having no tense is the limiting factor for this i not assigning nominative case to the subject np of the lower clause is this much clear we explained the problem also so now we know finiteness and tense and agreement which were very important in a sentence has more things to do it's important not just because of agreement and now you can see clearly why it becomes features like tense and agreement becomes head of a sentence okay so it has one more function that is assigning nominative case all right we don't have a nominative case here that's one we we explained this far but we don't we haven't resolved the problem you see what's the problem now the problem is it may not have nominative case but it does have a case and what case do you see here accusative case then the problem is if it did not get case from its canonical assigner canonical head which is responsible for giving it case where did it get case from particularly accusative case see the problem where did that get where did this np get case from see this thing we can say or one can say look this is not a big surprise probably it's getting case from v right because this v as a head must discharge its case okay it's a v it has its complement and it's a head it has capacity to assign accusative case so where is it assigning its accusative case it if it has an object remember we have said the complement of this v is whatever comes here right np or not not just the n but np the whole np so to resolve that argument that where does this verb this head discharge its case one can say it assigns its case to ip great that's also that looks okay but we have just defined that and and if we say this assigns accusative case because it assigns accusative case to the ip right therefore it assigns accusative case to the spec of ip also okay this is the solution that has been proposed but do you see a problem with the solution what's the problem not not m commanding clear right not m commanding and what is why is it not m commanding there is a barrier in it it is m commanding to the diff, to the extent that first maximal projection dominating v also dominates this np to this extent it is okay first maximal projection dominating v is vp right and vp also dominates this this one to this extent it is okay but what is not okay is maximal projections are barrier see that there is another maximal projection here which is ip following this definition of government v should not be able to assign its nominative case it v should not be able to assign accusative case to this np see this thing very nice 
but we see something beyond this happening which is we actually does not care for this kind of a barrier and violating the barrier it is still assigns accusative case to this that's the only way we can explain this problem so we say if we still say we are not making any change to this notion of government but if we still say that this type of sentence ends up violating this definition and still v happens to assign accusative case to the np the, the reason why we need to say that is because we need to explain the accusative case on this it is also true that this has accusative case what is true is this is a barrier okay but it is also true that this has accusative case so we would we would we or the theoreticians ended up saying that this and this v assigns accusative case to the np in the subject position disregard disregarding barrier okay do you see another weakness of this theory that it it defines something but soon after it violates that prop that that theoretical module in order to explain the sentence we are not violating it because we we are offenders right we are, we allow this kind of violation because we need explanation for this kind of a sentence and we clearly see that in the subject position that is spec ip lower ip we see no accusative case and now an, an np with the nominative case is not even allowed there which we can explain that because this is non finite ip i a nominative np is not allowed but when we see an accusative np we don't know what what to do so we again go ahead with the cost that we allow this kind of violation which is a weakness a patch in the theory does do you see the do you see the problem do we see the solution do we we understand the problem we see the solution to the problem and we also see the with with that we see weakness of the theory sorry the accusative what we are trying to say with with that with with these two sentences is john also has accusative case the fact that it's a lexical np the case accusative case on john is abstract we don't see that and if we explain this problem with just with john it will not be very convincing so we take another sentence where we clearly see an np with an accusative case therefore i took another sentence so no one has any difficulty with the other sentence but so after discussing the second sentence if i tell you john also has accusative case on it it's convincing but if i start with the with the first sentence it will be further abstract and probably not so convincing okay so john as an np will also have accusative case because we don't want to get into another difficulty where we say him has accusative case but john has nominative case and how could same position have two different cases okay therefore structural case marking gets into difficulty all the notion of c command and m command and government they keep running into difficulties therefore this kind of allowing case thing to happen is called exceptional case marking this is the reason why we call it exceptional case marking so some people some people suggested couple of more modification couple of more things which is they said look because they knew this is an this is a barrier okay they said look there is one way to say that non finite ips please pay attention to that non finite ips 
are probably not barriers, right. But again, again, it sounds okay, right. It solves the problem for the time being, but you can see that it is still a manipulation. If we are saying maximal projections are barrier, whether it is non-finite or finite, what difference does it make? After all, it is a maximal projection and it should be barrier. But again, you know, it is it's like life. Uh, we need compromises in life. So, so they ended up saying probably non-finite IPs are not barriers. We need more evidence to see such a thing whether they are really barriers or not barriers. See the problem? Okay? All right. So, John and him have accusative cases being in IP, spec IP of the complement clause. How do they get accusative cases? Did we solve this question? We understand? So, instead of the, the, the main point is instead of saying, instead of revising the notion of government once again or in a way we end up revising the notion of government, we are saying maximal projections are barriers, but not non-finite IPs. Everything else will be bar still barrier, but not non-finite IPs makes it weaker nonetheless, yet sounds like a convincing solution for the time being. This is yet another reason why people were getting impatient day by day and felt compelled to look at the whole theoretical apparatus afresh, that probably we are running into difficulty with nominative cases, we are running into difficulty with these kinds of sentences where we have I want him to go type of sentences. Are we really looking at the whole idea of case assignment in a proper way? Maybe there is a problem in the way we are looking at it. Is there an alternative way of looking at it? The alternative way was, was proposed and that is called, what is the what have we what have we been calling this whole framework so far sorry that is exceptional case marking it's part of principles and parameters approach of language right principles and parameters approach of language okay because of these problems when they revise the whole theoretical apparatus, they called it minimalist program. Okay? So, minimalist program is yet another revised version of theoretical apparatus to look at language. So, we will, we will not go too far into minimalist program because our domain is to look into principles and parameters. And we are looking at principles, we are looking at parameters, we are also looking at it at their limitations, we are looking at the problems that they have, they run into and we are looking at the solutions that existing paradigm, existing framework provides. Even though weaker, but that is that's a solution. See this thing? Just to underline uh, and not leave what I said as uh, mystery. When we see separation of the bundle of features into AGRP, TP and aspect phrase, right? they are going to have more implications in the theoretical apparatus and those implications and the separation, all of them are part of minimalist program. So, in a way I have given you a flavor of that mini, that uh, minimalistic approach of looking at it. What they mean by minimalistic approach is, let us go deeper into the into features and then probably we will have a new way of talking about cases, okay? because case is such an important 
aspect of sentence. We cannot leave it unexplained. Right now, principles and parameters approach explains case assignment, but, but with lot of patches. No, there are there are there are many languages where we have this problem. English definitely run into this problem. True, very very nice question. Just for English, again will be a weaker argument. But also keep in mind, even if it is available in one language, the problem remains in the theory. Keep, keep in mind that for a theoretical understanding of language, we do not really need a quantitative ways of numbering in terms of more than 50 percent of languages have this problem. That is not, that is not really important. But to answer your question in short, uh, I do not have the examples from top of my head right now, but this problem was in other languages too. I mean, uh, I, I, for the simplicity of theory, and for the simplest, for, for retaining our attention with the abstraction of these discussions, I am not bringing in examples from Hindi and other languages. No, no, absolutely not. See the, this model developed in 80s, we are not talking about old English period. We are not talking about Shakespearean English. This model of description the explaining language came up in, in 80s and the minimalist program that I am telling you about was developed in 95. So, it is a very recent phenomenon. It is not about old English or Shakespearean English or English had a different form or things like that. At the same time, what I have not told you keeping, regard, keep, keeping a, a abstraction in mind is things like ergative cases. Remember we have seen agreements like uh, Raju ne chai banai, right? Raj, ne was an ergative, ergative is a case, a, ergative, ne as the marker was an ergative case marker. So, how does case assignment take place in Hindi? And when, what is the reason we, we looked at agreement in that sentence, right? We said for the purpose of agreement, Chai agrees with the verb and not Raju, right? So, that is another reason, another motivating factor to separate features of agreement and tense, okay? So, we are, we are not going into too much of, too much of details. I wanted you to look at thematic relations, cases, particularly nominative and accusative with clarity and exist and within existing paradigm. Then I, then I further wanted you to see the problem with the existing paradigm. I hope with a, with a microscopic view, we have seen the problems, right? So, um, we, we already looked at this thing, him to go is an IP. It is a, it is not a full fledged IP, it is a non finite IP and this is what saved the theory for the time being. This is how it looks like and this is what I have been trying to show you on the board. We needed a diagram on the board, but this is how it looks like, all right? At the end of it, I want you to know that these are the terms with clarity you should keep in mind. What we mean by morphological case and what we mean by abstract case, okay? So, look at this sentence, John in sentence number one, I want John to go, is an, John is an example of abstract case. That is accusative case appears on John in an abstract way. I want him to go, him is an example of morphological case. It appears, accusative case appears on him in a morphological way in the sense that we are not saying I want he to go. 
Okay. He is a nominative form, him is a, morpholo is a morphologically modified accusative form and therefore we can see with see the difference with clarity. So that is about uh, morphological and abstract case and then we wanted to, you, I wanted you to understand the difference between structural case marking and exceptional case marking. Exceptional case marking is also part of except, part of a structural case marking because we are looking at an exceptional way of marking case to a particular NP also within a structural notions. So, keeping the differences and similarity in mind, try and understand exceptional case marking and a structural case marking. Is this clear to you? Uh, if, if that is clear, then um, before I ask you any, anything else, we will look at, we, we, we will stop and then we will talk, okay?